In Bowling Green, crews are in the fourth day of search and recovery submissions. Our Gladys Batista has been there on the ground uh, the last few days. Gladys, we know it's a very difficult time to say the least, but how is everyone doing there today? Well, Vicki, Jennifer, I can tell you that I get the sense that people are settling out of that initial shock and trying to at least get on the road to recovery and trying to pick up the pieces. Now, we have not heard any update from those search and recovery crews, but what we do know is that more than 160 people today are here from more than 30 agencies helping out with those search and recovery efforts. Now, that's more than what they had yesterday. Fire officials tell me that they've had so much of an outpouring of support that they actually don't have any more room for volunteers because they don't have any more tasks for them. So that certainly is good news that they're getting so much support. But of course, the families here still sharing a lot of tears of the gratitude for still being alive and the sadness. Today, we met the family of nine-year-old Angel Ortiz, the house behind me. His sister, his mother, and his, and his father have gotten out of this home still alive. But of course, today, that shock still very evident on their faces. There was a garage right there. The garage says he went over to my parents' room. When nine-year-old Angel Ortiz looks at this tornado-ravaged house, it's still his home. Even like this, and even after the horrific memories he would have here Saturday. Well, when I heard the stars, I knew it was going to come. Terrifying. I thought I was going to die or something. Angel's eyes can only help us get a glimpse of what he went through when the EF3 twister came through with a force so strong. Like the tornado like hit the living room a lot and the kitchen. It made it cut it, it like cut the whole house in half. He knew his mother could only do so much against mother nature. And then the tornado just started rolling around everywhere that it started the room. The first the first thing that came down was the glass. It just shattered. The ground started shaking me. My mom grabbed me by the hand. We saw, my mom sat on the toilet. I started crouching on the floor, and the walls came collapsing on us. The walls collapsing would make the difference between life and death for this family. One of the walls like went like this, and the other one went like this. So it made like a little roof to protect us, but still, it was like I started freaking out and all that. I started yelling for help. Barefoot, Angel says he and his family had nothing when they walked out of here except their lives. And after came a panic no child should have. Because my friend Marion was right there, like right next to me, like across. So, and I, I saw her house, so I started worrying about her a lot because her whole house was like obliterated. Instead of play dates or being at school, seeing his friends now is often bittersweet. Yeah, I seen one of my friends, Eileen, and a couple of my other friends in school. But my, my friend Giovanni's house, I think it fell down. Because I saw him, he was, he was sleeping in the gym at school, so I think his house fell down. The tornado killed 15 people, including seven children. The weight of this tragedy is being felt by even the youngest in this community. Angel is now a little boy with a big understanding of just how precious life is. Just happy I'm alive. Now, Vicki, Jennifer, let those words sink in. That is just a sense of what the children in this community are feeling. And even after going through all of that, Angel says he still wants to help, and he gets that from his family. They're from Puerto Rico. They've been here for about five years, and they tell me that they lived through Hurricane Maria, and they never thought they'd go through anything like this. But here they are. They're here cooking hamburgers and hot dogs for free, giving them out to anybody who needs them. Coming up at 6, we spoke to a woman also from Puerto Rico who took refuge in a fire station. Hear about those terrifying moments and what she's now doing to help coming up at 6. For now, we're live in Bowling Green. Gladys Bautista, WOKY 